Hi and welcome to the XCAR Roundup of the Year where today we're talking about May, another jam-packed month and we looked at the McLaren MP4-12C or 12C as it's known to its mates and the classic car club lent us a Rolls-Royce. Mm, well, we start off with the McLaren, the 12C. Good lord, that thing is competent. You had a very quick spin in it. I had it for, I think, four or five days. It was unbelievable. It was comfortable. That's the, that's the weird thing. You get in a supercar and it's mental fast, it's very much as you'd expect a supercar to be, but you get in the McLaren and it just glides over bumps. The cliche goes that it's like being in an S-Class, but you're in a supercar, but it is actually quite like that. It looks good, it's punishingly fast. But if you're very, 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 I say patient, um, you can get nearly 30 miles to the gallon out of it. I got 28.8 mpg out of it on the M4 driving back from Wales. Yeah, no one buys a McLaren for the mpg. <laughs> no, they don't. But you can do it if you want to. It was, it, it looked great. It went unbelievably quickly. We're in the exceptionally lucky position to have had the 458 Italian, mm. which is the direct competitor for the yeah. MP4 12C. So we drove that a year earlier. Yeah. Which would you pick? That's tough. You know what? I'd probably go with the McLaren. I'm one of the very few people that would do that, but I go with the McLaren. I think the um, the way the Ferrari delivers its power and its noise and its look and its feel is incredible. But if I had the money and I was in that situation, I'd buy the McLaren and then spend all of my free time on an airfield just going up and down in third gear. I don't think you can look at those performance figures and say a car's, that car's truly boring. I mean, I look no. at those figures and I'm like, I don't think that car could ever be boring. No, I mean, no. It's a relative thing, right? When yeah. people say it's boring, they mean at the absolute top end of exciting, yeah. this might not be quite, quite on the most exciting, exciting side of that tip. I think that's but, a first world problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much a first world problem. As, as I said in the film, the, um, the 12C or McLaren itself has a bit of an issue because people say, oh, it's not as exciting as Ferrari because McLaren itself as a brand is very race focused, very motorsport focused, which isn't as accessible to people who just like cars because you get people who like cars and you get people who like motorsport as well. So Ferrari has an enormous road car heritage, whereas McLaren has the F1. Yeah. And that's it. Well, and sort of a little bit of Mercedes McLaren SLR. So people don't get that actually all the passion that you get in a Ferrari actually still goes into a McLaren. Okay, well from modern cars back down to classics, we went down to the classic car club and picked up a Rolls Royce, a 1973 Rolls Royce Corniche. My word, that was one hell of a car. It was, it was such a privilege to drive such an old car, and, and they made quite a few of them, so they're not completely uncommon. You can find them around. In fact, you could probably pick one up quite reasonably now because they're just so well built. This car was 40 years old and it drove so, so well. But it was the feeling of driving it through central London um, with the top down on a cool evening and just there's just something about driving a Rolls-Royce in London. It just seems like everything fits like a jigsaw puzzle where everything has fallen into place. And you're driving this huge car, which is so, so easy to drive. We'd, we'd driven it previously the year before um, uh, for um, only about 20 or 30 minutes. And this time we had it for the whole day, we did a night shoot with it. And it's, you literally can steer this two and a half ton car with one finger on the wheel. You don't think it should be possible, but you can. Almost everything worked on it as well, which was quite impressive. It was just fabulous. London at night all lit up and this Rolls Royce Corniche kind of going through uh, Regent Street. We went past Knights Bridge and it just looked beautiful and stunning and it just looked in its element. And I think that was the perfect place to shoot it really. The links to that film and everything else we've discussed today will be below and hopefully you'll join us again tomorrow. We'll be recapping on June.